Hello everyone, this is DA from E Academy. In the previous video, we have talked about what is the relation between the local coordinate system, the global coordinate system, and how we can transform any equation that we have written in the global coordinate system into the local coordinate system. And you know that these two shape functions are of a linear element. And in today's video, we will see how we can derive the shape function for a quadratic element. So let's start. So we have a quadratic element, which means that we have an element with three nodes. And this is the first node. This is the second node. This is the third node. The second node can be in a halfway between the first and the third node or anywhere between first and third node because if it is in the halfway between the first and third node it would be a special case obviously um, but it can be anywhere between first and the third node so if we see it in a local coordinate system this would be x bar is equal to zero and this would be x bar is equal to x b or we can say that this is equal to the length of the bar of this element and this here let's say the distance between node 1 and the second node is some alpha this is the distance between node 1 and node 2 because we are in the local coordinate system here so this node is 0 this node is the length of the element and so the second node is at some length alpha you can also say that this alpha is actually the ratio of the position of this element by the length of the element and because the length of the element is always greater than the position of this node and that it is why it should be less than one always and exactly that is the reason if it is in the halfway between one and the third node so it would be 0.5 and if we exactly define the position just like x bar is zero for the node one x bar is h the length of the element and here x bar should be alpha times the length of the element. So again, we are in the local coordinate system and we have write this node numbering in the local coordinate system. And this is our eth node in the quadratic element. As we have talked about in the previous videos that we have three nodes, which implies that we have three shape functions. One that is for the node 1, psi 1, 1 here is representing the node numbering and E is representing that it is at the eth level or the element level. Same case, psi 2, the shape function for the second node and psi 3, the shape function for the third node. And again, psi 1 would be 1 for this point and 0 at second and third node. Psi 2 would be 1 at this point and 0 at one and third node, psi three would be one at the third node and zero at one and the second node. Why? Because it is the interpolation function exactly. The shape function is our interpolation function and that is the nature of interpolation function. And that is the approximation function we have because we have three nodes. So that is why j is equal to one, two, three, the summation of uj and psi j. If we're going to expand this notation, we will get this psi one, u one psi one, and from 1 to 3. So now we have to derive psi 1, psi 2 and psi 3 for this quadratic element. We'll start just like as we did in the previous video by writing a general equation for these shape function because if we, we have derived the shape function for the linear elements have only two nodes. So if these are the quadratic element, the general shape function would be a quadratic equation. So this is psi 1 at x bar because we are in the local coordinate system a b x bar plus c x bar square. So this is a general quadratic equation and we will write psi 2 again as a general quadratic equation and psi 3 as well. So we have three general quadratic equation for the shape function psi 1, psi 2 and psi 3 and here a, b, c, d, e, f and k, l, m are the variables that we need to find in order to write the specific psi 1, psi 2, and psi 3 for a quadratic element. We'll start 
putting x bar is equal to 0 in this equation. We know that the only shape function that will survive at x bar is equal to 0 is psi 1 and psi 2 and psi 3 will be equal to 0. So if we put x bar is equal to 0 in, e, in these all of the equation, we will left out with this equation will give us psi 1 at x bar is equal to 0 x bar is 0, these two things will be 0 and a is equal to 1. From this, this is equal to 0. Psi 2 is 0 at x is x bar is equal to 0. So d, e and f, f and e would be 0 and d is equal to 0 and in the same reason k is equal to 0. So we have these three variables, the extracted value of. So on the same note, if we put x bar is equal to alpha h e in these three equations. Psi 1 will be 0, psi 2 will be 1, and psi 3 will be 0. So the only thing that we left out after plugging x bar is, is this. This is 0, a is 1, so plus b times alpha h, that is the length, plus c times alpha h squared. Psi so will be 1, so this 1 is equal to d0, e alpha h, and plus f alpha h whole squared. And psi so 3 is, psi so 3 at this point will be 0, so k is also 0. We are only, we only left out with l alpha h plus m alpha h whole squared. And then if we put x bar is equal to h e in these equations, we will left out with. So these are the equations that we got after plugging x bar is equal to h e. So apparently we have these three equations, these additional three equations, and these three equations. So we have nine equations. We have figured out the values of a, d, and k. Initially we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine variables. So if we know these three values, we only left out with six variables, right? So we have six variables and these nine equations. Now we have to solve these equations in order to find out the values of the remaining variables. So we'll start by solving for the first shape function. Because in the previous video, we know what we have done. We took one by one the shape functions and formed the matrix form AX is equal to B. And then we have solved the X vector to figure out what exactly be the specific shape function. So on the same note, A vector, that would be the vector of coefficients for X bar is equal to 0. So here a would be 1. a having coefficient of 1, b and c having coefficient of 0 after plugging x bar is equal to 0. Then at x bar is equal to alpha h e, a is again 1 because we have value of a, b having the coefficient of alpha h e, and c having a uh, coefficient of having a coefficient of alpha h e squared. And at this alpha is equal to h e, a is again 1, b with very coefficient h e, and c with the coefficient h e squared. The vectors, the x, the unknown, would be 1, a, because we have the value of a, so it would be b and c, and the b vector would be the value of psi 1 at x bar is equal to 0 is 1, psi 1 at x bar is equal to alpha h is 0, and psi 1 at x bar is equal to h is also equal to 0. So this is our ax is equal to b. Now this is a 3 cross 3 matrix. In order to solve this we have to take the inverse and find the value of b and c. To solve it manually, so we have to use a formula. So the formula that I'm going to use will be so this is the giant formula that we will be going to use. And this is the general formula. So if we have a 3 cross 3 matrix with these entries, 
So the inverse would be like this. This matrix divided by this thing. So here, the denominator would be A times CI minus FH minus B times DI minus FG plus C into DH minus EG. And the matrix, the entries of the matrix would be here I guess I have pronounced C as E. So here it is A times EI minus FH. And here it is C with DH minus EG. So in this matrix, that is a 3 cross 3 matrix, that it would be in the numerator EI minus FH. This is CH minus BI and BF minus EC. FG minus DI. This is AI minus CG. This is... CD minus AF, this is DH minus EG, BG minus AH, AC minus BD. So this would be 3 cross 3 as well, but if we plug the values that we have A, B, and C, uh, we will solve it uh, and multiply it accordingly. So if I uh, plug our values in this matrix that we have, because we know we have A is 1, B is 0, and C is equal to 0. So let's plug the values here. So here we have A that is equal to 1. E is alpha HE. And I is HE squared. So B is 0. So this would be 0. And C is also 0. So this would also be 0. Here we have... E, I, and F, G. F is, G is 1. In, in our case, G is equal to 1. So that would have uh, eliminated it. C, that is 0. And B, that is also 0. C is 0. And B is also 0. So this would be 0. Here again, we have B and C. This would also be equal to 0. Here we have F, G, minus D, I. So D is 1. D is 1 and G is also is equal to 1. So G and D would be 1. I have to eliminate it. Wait a minute. And A is 1. C is 0. So this would be 0. And this would only be I. Again, C is 0. So this would be 0. And AF, we only left out with F because A is 1. So this would be 0. And A is 1. So F is equal to. So that we have only F. D and G, D and G would be 1. So this H and H minus E, then B, G minus A, H. B is 0, so this would be 0. And A is 1, so we only left out with H. And A, E minus B, D again, B is 0. A is 1, so only left out with E. So we have simplified it. Now I have to write it clearly, what we have. So our inverse would be this. Now we have these values and we have to multiply this with 1 and 0 and 0 like this. So if we multiply this A inverse with 1, 0 and 0, you know how we can multiply uh, two matrix. The main part was how we can derive the inverse of this matrix and this was the formula and this was now what we have, the values in A inverse. So after multiplying the values of A, this A inverse with 1, 0, 0, we will be having the values for B and C. And again, solving for psi 2, writing these equations and taking the inverse, we will, we will be getting the values of E and F. And for psi 3, we will be getting the values of L and M. So it would be your task now to solve uh, the final part and find the values of EF, LM, and write the specific shape functions for Psi 1, Psi 2, and Psi 3. The part is, I'm going to write Psi 1, Psi 2, and Psi 3 uh, for you to verify it, your answers, and it would be very easy after having this formula of inverse. The application would never hurt you after taking the inverse by this formula. So, you will get after solving this would be of the form so you will be getting these three shape functions 
So in the next video, we will continue our talk about the shape function, the representation, the visualization, as well as uh, what would be the next step in the finite element method. So this is for now. We're looking for more such videos, then you can subscribe this channel or to watch more upcoming videos. We will meet in the next video. Till then, take care. Goodbye.